So it's been a turbulent 24 hours here on YouTube after the conspiracy heavyweight champion of the world and human frogman Alex Jones got banned. For real this time. From Facebook and YouTube. It's actually happened. Alex Jones. He is the founder of InfoWars and he is now feeling the heat himself. YouTube, Facebook, and Apple all announcing they're removing his content from their platform. So this happened just uh, two hours after we put out our own video about Facebook and Alex Jones. You can tell time has passed because I got a different haircut. So I don't know. I don't know. Is it a coincidence? Did you want to get out there? Mmm. <laughs> that I manifested with my dragon energy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Mark Zuckerberg, you're always one step ahead of me. So we wanted to join in on the conversation that's happening right now because this is a huge move. One that a lot of people think should have happened a long time ago, but now it's happened and it's finally happening. It's interesting because over the last month, both Facebook and YouTube have been very hesitant to crack down on fake news specifically even though the pressure on them to do something was crazy. Facebook last month banned Alex Jones' personal account for 30 days and took down four of his videos for breaching their community guidelines. YouTube did the same and they also banned him from live broadcasts for a while. But it still didn't seem like they were doing enough. Spotify was even under fire for refusing to take down his podcasts, something that they ended up backtracking on eventually. So why did everybody suddenly have a change of heart? And why did it take a move by Apple of all people to get the rest of these companies to move? Kind of seems like a little bit of a cop out, doesn't it? All of these giant media corporations waiting on each other to take the first step. But when you think about it, Apple had the least to lose. And there's a reason for that. It's because of the way Facebook and YouTube have set themselves up from the very beginning as bastions of free speech and expression. That now they kind of look like they're turning on their own principles. As Wired.com put it this morning, if Infowars was cancelled by any TV station or had their op-eds taken down by any newspaper, no one would have batted an eye and no one would have been up in arms about free speech. Why? Because these are private entities and they can do whatever they like. The thing is YouTube and Facebook are exactly the same thing, but we don't see them that way. And that's exactly where the problem is. And it's exactly why both of them are now being accused of having a liberal bias and of censoring conservative media. Here's a clip from that infamous Facebook Senate hearing back in April. Americans who I think are deeply concerned that, that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. To be clear, there is actually no evidence to support what alleged Zodiac killer, aka Ted Cruz, is saying. And while critics are saying that this is setting a dangerous precedent for free speech on the internet, and that media giants shouldn't get to say what is allowed to be said and what isn't, I think Infowars is very different. For one thing, Alex Jones' crazy antics have had real-world consequences. His persistent campaign to paint the Sandy Hook school shooting as a government conspiracy, a false flag involving actors, and a whole bunch of different moving parts has affected the families of the victims here. A lot of his followers have ended up harassing and sending threats to some of the parents of the kids that were killed in the shootings that have been painted by Alex Jones as so-called crisis actors. In fact, four of the families, including an FBI agent who was working on the case, have now taken Infowars to court for defamation and for damages. And if they win, it could set a whole new precedent for how fake news is treated in the future. But here's another thing. The reasons Facebook and YouTube gave for banning Alex Jones and Infowars have been pretty vague. Facebook said that they took down the page for glorifying violence, which violates their graphic violence policy and uses dehumanizing language to describe people who are transgender, Muslims, and immigrants, and that violates their hate speech policies. Apple also said that it doesn't tolerate hate speech and they have clear guidelines that creators and developers must follow. YouTube simply says this account has been terminated for violating YouTube's community guidelines. So they've all accused Alex Jones of violating the community standards, but this is nothing new. He's been doing this for years. And in terms of hate speech, well, that also has been going on for a very long time. What is new is that while he's been banned over the last month, he's been finding creative ways of getting around that, appearing on other people's live streams and showing up in videos that he shouldn't have been showing up. So in a way, he kind of had this coming. But what none of these companies mentioned is the very reason people have been calling on them to ban his page and the very same topic that Mark Zuckerberg has been desperately trying to avoid, fake news. And because of this, this move now is playing directly into the hands of Infowars, who've long been raving about media censorship since the beginning of time. And guess what? It's exactly how they've responded to this now. Here's a video their editor at large posted this morning. This is political censorship. This is the purge. Facebook cited language used to describe Muslims, transgenders, and immigrants. They provided zero specific examples as to what we said that was verboten. And neither did Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. See what I mean? And while it's true that those who wanting to find out what Alex Jones has to say about the latest conspiracies, say Kylie Jenner's latest chapstick line, and how that's a cover-up for 
the way the government is secretly spying on all of us and collecting our DNA, they're still gonna be able to find him. He's got a website, he's still on Twitter. There's a lot of other avenues. But what is true is that this media ban will drastically limit the access that he has to a new audience. And the seemingly egalitarian way that the internet is putting his videos on the same platforms as major news outlets. It's precisely because of the way Facebook and YouTube's algorithms work that so many people have been exposed to Infowars and their dumb ideas in the first place. And in an era where most of the information that we're getting about the world comes from social media, it's no wonder we're living in a crisis of fake news right now. But if Facebook and YouTube are gonna do something to stop this, then they have to be upfront and transparent about why they're doing it. It's good for our access to information, it's good for our democracies, and it's probably good for our mental health as well. But that's what I think. What do you think about all this? Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? I don't know. They're like, where do you... Because, like, if he's been burned, yeah. someone else... Someone's gonna take his place, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this, this is maybe this is like a terrible idea, and then like in, in two years' time, we're gonna have five different Alex Joneses. Yeah. And then uh, we'll have to start burning all of them and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I mean, like, it's, I think I think this is an era where no one really has a real answer about how to tackle fake news. Uh, I don't think anyone really knows what the right thing to do is and what is going to happen that's not gonna damage the way that we talk about free speech and we talk about the democracy of the internet. And so this kind of feels like an experiment. Like whether it works or whether it backfires, we don't know. We're just kind of like all of us as like humanity, we're just kind of like marching into the abyss together. All right. Cool. If you enjoyed that discussion, uh, like and subscribe uh, to our channel Ist. Um, and we've got a lot more. I have a lot more to say about this and a lot of other things. Uh, I have so many opinions. Most of them you'll probably disagree with, but that's what the internet is for. Maybe we need a podcast. Maybe we do need a podcast. <laughs>